I have been on a caregiving journey now for about five years. I'll tell you more about that in a moment. And after I wrote the book on caregiving, never thinking that I would do that five years ago, I've sort of made it my business to learn about caregiving, what's going on. And I have to tell you all that Project Compassion is at the top of the game. Because if you were to compare caregiving to the internet, remember what email and internet and all that was like 15, 20 years ago? It felt foreign. It was immature. It was in its infancy. There wasn't much happening. People were rather dubious. Remember that? I can remember saying, I'll never own a cell phone. And I said it proudly, right? <laughs> and today I'm texting Stephen. I mean, you know, who knew? But when you compare the evolution of that, and then you compare it to caregiving, we're, we're back where the internet was 15, 20 years ago. We're searching. We're, 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 we're finding the paths. Uh, Project Compassion and another organization as well as my own, eCare Diary, we are teaming up to try to get as much caregiver information out to the world as possible. Because as I mentioned earlier, things like this don't happen very often in our world. Uh, caregivers don't have opportunities to come together and really talk. And so what we want to do is take pieces of what I'm saying today and putting it out there for other caregivers. I think it's so important that caregivers know that other people are out there because, you know, we're a group, you, for each one of us today, there are thousands of caregivers in the United States sitting out there alone at their homes right now. So the more we can get information to them, the better. But each one of you has a specific caregiving journey. You hear me? Each one of you has a specific caregiving journey. Now, there are principles that all of us can learn from. Many are in my book. But when it comes right down to it, one size doesn't fit all. So I want you to think about your journey. And we're going to give you ways to do that today to think about how would I customize my caregiving journey? What does it look like? I was a caregiver three times, and each of those journeys was totally different. And I'll share more about that in a few moments. But they were so different that I, I could, it was like comparing apples and oranges. Now, did I ask, need to ask for help? in each one? Absolutely. Was it important to create a caring community? Absolutely. Was it important to go out and build bridges, bridges and anticipate transitions? Absolutely. But in all of those general principles, it was a unique journey that I was on each one of those three times. So are you, um, are you ready to take the journey with me? What do you think about when you think about that verb, enrich? Come on, we're, we're, a, we're a group that we can share and be fine and have the confidence and there are no wrong answers or anything. So make better. Make better. Expand. Make, expand. Say go beyond. Go beyond. You think of enriched vitamins. <laughs> you know, they, they give you that extra added strength. What else? Me? It's, yeah. a strong word. it's a strong word, you bet. It is a strong word. It says, I can do it. Right? I'm there. I can do this. And so if I were to name a third overall objective beyond having lots of tips and tools when you leave here, having the beginnings of a customized, unique journey that's all yours, the third thing is to find your voice to say, I can do it. I, as a caregiver, can change the tone of my environment. How many professional caregivers do we have in here? 
great. Thank you all for coming. So what I've been talking about is, um, are you on a caregiving journey? Are you on a caregiving journey? Yes. Absolutely. And it's unique. You're a professional caregiver. Are you also a family caregiver by any chance? No? Professional caregiver. And professional caregivers, I want you all to know, you know, sometimes we think, oh, those doctors and nurses and social workers, you know, they have the same needs as we do. They're very similar needs, especially what we're talking about today, the social, the psychology, the emotional needs. All right, let's continue on our journey. Jessica, if you would uh, switch the... So on this journey uh, that we're going to take and what makes you unique is you've got to think of yourself. What are your, what's your personality like? Every personality is going to be a different caregiving style or journey. Um, what are your interests? What are your skills? Where do you come from? And if you want to take notes about this in your notebook that uh, Project Compassion has provided you, great. Um, you'll be given an opportunity in several of the sessions to think about your strengths and about your interests and how they work into the caregiving journey. But if you want to take notes, feel free. So my recommendation is when you're starting your journey, think about who you are as a person. Are you a private person or are you a very gregarious person? It makes a difference in what your journey is like. Um, what kind of skills do you have? Uh, were you an engineer by profession? Were you a nurse? Um, were you a librarian? They're all very different. Um, I was in a session yesterday, and I've heard this comment before, that people who come to the caregiving journey, and especially if you have siblings, and each one has a different profession, you're, you're all, your mindsets are all different when it comes to when mom and dad get ill. So the, the, the librarian's going to have, okay, I need to go research it. I need to go you know, look up every detail and make sure I got all the data. And maybe the, um, the artist, the visual artist in the family, the sibling says, oh, we just need to trust our intuition, right? Which drives the librarian crazy. <laughs> so these things are very important, just not only for you, but when you consider your family. And where are they coming from? What are their skills and interests? And it will help you be more empathic and your response to them will be more compassionate because you'll go, I know she's a librarian. I know she's got to have all that information. And you say, so I think I, you get my point. So just think about this as a part of your journey. Okay, Jessica, your passengers. Well, those passengers are your family and your friends. Who's on the bus, I like to say, right? Who's on your caregiving bus, right? Now, in my journeys, I had lots of people on the bus in one caregiving journey, and when it came to working with my husband, there were only two of us. There was only one other person. I had one passenger. Which do you think was hardest? This is a trick question, by the way. Which do you think was hardest? You're saying one. The other one was not. Actually, they were both hard. What I'd like for you to do with your partner again, I want you to think about this metaphor, the journey and the fuel, and is it a straight road? Is it a curvy road? How long has it been? Has there been a lot of rain on it? And I'd like for you to spend just a moment thinking about this metaphor with respect to your own unique journey. Three questions, we're gonna keep these up here after my presentation. We're gonna keep returning to these questions today and uh, that we want you to continue to think about. Um, what are you finding to be the most difficult part of your journey? I would encourage you to share your story with other people here in the room today because what may be difficult for you might not be difficult for them. It might be a strength they have. So you can share, oh, I've done this. Oh, really? Okay, you've done that. Ah, excellent. All right? Uh, two, what are you learning about yourself during your caregiving journey? I really want you to leave here today feeling uplifted. Like, I'm learning. I'm being enriched. It's important 
then I'm on this journey. It's what my life is. And I need to be here, you know, to that why in the road. I need to go on the why in the road that says, I want to learn something about myself and about others. So what are you learning? And number three, what have you done for yourself lately? <laughs> okay. So that being kind of where the rubber meets the road. What have you been doing? What are you doing for yourself lately? Okay. I believe that storytelling is a transformative process. When you, t when you th write down, you notice I gave my caregiving journeys names. I gave them names. I talked about, let me just make sure I get it correct. Got it written down here. I gave my first journey the name of a clash of values. And my second, dealing with my own emotions and my insecurities. And the third, my emotional cocoon. When you, when you give your stories names or your caregiving story a name, for me, it helps you lift up yourself and give it some perspective. And then you can share it with other people. And I think that makes a huge difference in not feeling alone anymore. You feel like you're in a community of people. So a transformative story. Jessica? All right. Storytelling, and I will read through these quickly, but these are the kinds of things it does for us in lifting us up and enriching us. It creates a we environment, easing loneliness. I heard earlier a debit to the emotional bank account is loneliness. Well, tell your story, share it. Okay, it's unique, it will help others. It creates a human habitat and relationships. It demonstrates the power of love in all of us. It's all about giving and receiving. And it represents endless variety. Stories are always interesting. And they celebrate a shared meaning. And they, and they celebrate the human spirit. They show why caring for others is so critical. We heard this lady say, when I give somebody a response and they give me a response that's positive, oh, it, it just makes us all feel human. <laughs> It lifts and celebrates the human spirit. Um, it's democratic. It's a never-ending process, and it does celebrate our humanity. Okay. So when we explore, and you're going to be doing this all day long. Next one. You're going to be sharing with others in this room your struggles, your emotions, your challenges, and ultimately your success. Because every one of you in here has built character from your emotional struggles. You are coming out on the other end. If you're not there yet, you will. Because struggle builds character. And character builds hope. And hope is what Hope and love are what this is all about. For people who look at me back in Winter Park, Florida and say, why do you do this work? It must be depressing. I say, oh, contraire. This work is enriching. It is where we will all journey someday. We are just some of us here at this point in our lives. But it's all about building character, getting hope and love. Okay, so when you share your stories today, what I want you to do is I want you to think about the well and the flowers. You're gonna dig deep. Think about your own unique journey. And when the water comes up, it's not gonna be ugly, dirty water. It's gonna be beautiful water that creates flowers and hope and love in all of you.